Hi there. I'm going to walk us through the first materiality assessment that I conducted on Alphabet, or also known as Google. And the question that materiality poses, broadly speaking, is does this company belong in the future we want? What I mean by that is, is the company creating the conditions that enable life to thrive, or is it undermining those conditions? And those are admittedly pretty big questions, so I offer deeper details in the methodology deck, which you can access from the assessment and click through there. Uh, to answer those questions, I first look at the business model of the company. So you'll see a snapshot here, and it turns out that Google's business model is essentially to sell advertising. They do other things. They have what they call other bets, and you can find out more in their annual report. But 80% of their 250 some billion US in revenue in 2021 came from advertising. And there's really no transparency, as far as I could find, about who those advertisers are and what the impacts of those companies are. And frankly, that's what really matters in terms of Google's impacts on the future that we might want. How is advertising contributing to the future we want? It likely isn't. It's likely undermining it, fueling the twinned crises of collapsing human health and collapsing biospheric health. Well, what about their conversation with investors then? What are they talking to them about? On slides 10 to 14, I summarize some of the relevant findings. Rather than going comment by comment, I'll actually just double back to the business model conversation where we see the evolution here. And in the investor call, they essentially signaled most recently, uh, the plan is to do more advertising. That's how the financial success of the business will continue. So in sum, all the nice social and environmental impacts that we could find out about are essentially a byproduct of advertising. So what about the environmental, social, and governance disclosures? They don't publish a straight up ESG report. They do have a number of great stories and things that they're doing. Uh, certainly some wonderful things. They provide tools to small businesses, to students, marginalized communities. I myself have been benefiting from Google. You're looking at Google Slides here. I used Google Docs for the interviews. You're no doubt watching this on YouTube. Um, but in terms of straight up environmental, social and governance impacts, there are some concerns. For example, they promote their uh, carbon neutrality, but they don't really talk about the carbon impacts of the businesses that advertise with them, which is where the real impacts are. So there's a disconnect. That's what I think. What do others think? Part of the materiality process is to gather input from a range of stakeholders. In a perfect world, there would be hundreds of conversations summarized here in multiple languages. In the world I live in, I managed to do a few diverse ones uh, in mostly English, a couple in Portuguese. I want to draw your attention, though, to two things that are distinct from traditional materiality. First, you can see with whom I spoke. Names, transcripts, the full videos, you can listen to the audio or just skim the written material. You don't have to take my word on this. You can form your own opinion. With typical corporate materiality, you have no idea who they talk to or what people said. It just gets glossed over. They know they talk to lots of people and they include a paragraph about the process. As somebody who conducted those interviews, who wrote those paragraphs, and who has been interviewed as a stakeholder, I can attest that a lot gets glossed over there. Another thing that's different here is that I attempt to hear the perspective of non-human stakeholders. And while that's kind of impossible, I'm trying to do it anyway. So, for example, with Ricardo Cardim, he shows up as both a citizen of Sao Paulo and an architect, as well as somebody role playing on behalf of the Atlantic Forest. If you were to ask your local river or lake or mountains or migratory birds what they would like to see from Google in the future, I wonder what you would hear. So the two by two matrix, I'm the first to say it's a problematic tool, but I created one anyway to provoke discussion because I think it's helpful to hear what people say in terms of the social and uh, ecosystem impacts. And you can see there's a lot of disparity in views, pretty firm consensus that Google has made a lot of great things possible, but really big concerns about the business model, essentially that they're using data to sell advertising and that there's a risk of mis and disinformation and pretty aggregated control of who can see what, when. So what's the conclusion? Well, I offer some summary points and I would say my primary concern is a lack of any evidence that, uh, in, that the executives are making decisions based on the future we want. I offer su suggestions about the potential for the future, i.e. a business model that succeeds when humans and society and the biosphere succeed. If Google could be that,
they'd be most welcome in the future.